Well, we're live on this Sunday morning. Good morning, everybody. Joe Chaffee here with Joe Rayo on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, our Sunday morning coffee with both of us. Yes. And I got to tell you, Joe, yes, it was cold yesterday. <laughs> it was really cold. And it's cold right now. And it's cold right now. And good thing for the last day of the month because uh, they, uh, I, for the leap, I'm sorry, and for the, the leap year, the leap day, because uh, because of the leap day, uh, Kennedy, Newark, LaGuardia, all reported trace snow amounts yesterday from snow showers that went through. Ice oh, yeah. slip did not. So Ice slip was the only one of the bunch that uh, of of uh, all the stations in and around the New York City area, at least, they all had a trace of snow for the month. They missed out on getting the big goose egg. New York City had already gotten their trays. But Islip's the only one that didn't see a flake or an ice pellet. I did not see a flake or an ice pellet all month long. Amazing. Amazing. At Friday morning, I know the National Weather Service put out a, a tweet saying that there were flurries in the air uh, before daybreak. And that was the first time that they at the uh, National Weather Service forecast office saw snow all through the month of February. Um, so... <laughs> It was that kind of a, a month, and now we'll see what uh, what March has in store for us. You you had an interesting, you had a very interesting statistic that you posted about with regards to March uh, March months March snows March uh, the snows in the month of March following snowless Februarys. Well, actually, I have to uh, tip my cap to uh, to um, the chairman, uh, Mr. Briller, on uh, on not just one but three different. Uh, 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 statistics there, and you're absolutely right, that's one of them, uh, where he says that, and actually I had to correct Scott, because when he sent that information to me, he had indicated that the year in question where, um, uh, I think one of those was that the only time we ever put together back-to-back -to -back trace amounts in February and March was in the winter of 2011 and 2012, and I had to go back to him and say, I think you made a typo, it's actually 2001 and 2002, where February had a trace, March had a trace of snow, uh, and he uh, he said, "Yeah, sorry, you know it, 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 that happens." But still, it it'll be interesting to see now in March, 11 or 12 out of uh, 18 uh, uh, situations where less than an inch of snow has fallen in February. March, on the other hand, has had in 12 cases uh, quite a bit more. In fact, I think the uh, the average for uh, snowfall in March was like five or six or seven inches. So there's still hope, folks. There's still a possibility that we might see more than just a few flakes in the air. And Joe, I've already heard the rumblings. I've been hearing the rumblings for the last couple of days about this coming Friday as being the one that will finally break the string of uh, sadness for the snow lovers, <laughs> uh, the good, potential of maybe luck. some uh, significant <clears throat> snow on Friday. But I still uh, say trapes, through the minefield or the snowfields carefully because we've been disappointed before. Good luck. Um, uh, David Schwartz, uh, you know, and, and a couple of people were, uh, bring up this point because those snowflakes that fell yesterday didn't stick. So how is it that, you know, they reported a trace? Well, uh, the actual precip that fell was snow. Uh, it was observed as snow. Now, whether it stuck or not uh, isn't an issue because uh, it's a trace amount. It's not a point one. So obviously, if it was a, if it had stuck, uh, it, it would have uh, on the ground. Then you might have gotten a point one out of it if it snowed long enough. Uh, but in fact, uh, it was amount, a trace amount would be less than a hundredth of an inch. Correct, regardless yes. of whether it sticks or not. Right. Because the precip type is snow. Uh, you're looking at it; it's coming down. That it didn't stick uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, right. Now, if let's say let's say that snow fell and didn't accumulate, you know, hit the ground and it melted instantly, uh, but it would have generated a liquid amount of precip, then you would have the liquid amount of precip of 0 0.01 or whatever it is, uh, but it would probably would go down as trace because uh, the flake flakes fell, but it didn't stick to the ground. Does that make right. sense? It makes, it makes sense to it makes, me. Okay, and that does well, make sense. Like think about it. It does make sense. A few moments ago, I just said less than a hundredth of an inch, so really an immeasurable amount, but still 
as you just said, being observed as falling from the sky. So there you go. And I like Mon I, I like March snow because it, for two reasons. Number one, it usually usually does not last very long, even if it accumulates to a degree. And number two, you get a lot of these March snowfalls, especially late in the month where the snowflakes are about as, the size of silver dollars. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. There's a little, you know, the <laughs> yeah. atmosphere getting warming up. Uh, the moisture content is a lot higher. Yeah, every, every once I can remember, every once in a while when you get a late season snow and you, out here, I've, I've seen them the size of pancakes, you know, wow. they, they come down. They For hurt sure. when they hit you. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as, you know, where, where snow did stick, I do have the, now, now the totals here, it's a 72-hour total. So this goes from, uh, the, this covers virtually all of the snow that fell in um, in, in Lake Effect country. Uh, but that was really uh, substantial. So we've got uh, close to some final uh, final amounts based on uh, <clears throat> the Weather Services analysis on uh, their snowfall analysis page. And uh, we had a pocket <clears throat> where we would have expected that pocket on the east shores of Lake Ontario, 36-inch uh, plus amounts uh, just west of I-81 and south of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, in, of, of State Road 13. Uh, really got clobbered uh, with uh, 36 inches plus and a large area here uh, going up uh, to the north and to the south uh, anywhere from you know the base of at least uh, three or four inches when you get close to Syracuse and Utica and uh, back uh, over to Rochester at about three inches uh, Buffalo Niagara Falls had about um, three or four uh, Buffalo uh, picking up uh, about three or four, but then you go into the snow belts in southwestern New York and into northwestern Pennsylvania. You had uh, some uh, six inch plus amounts and a small area of 18 inch plus. So it was fairly sizable. It was a pretty active lake effect event. And, you know, for our friends, Joe, in um, northern Vermont, uh, also some pockets of uh, hefty snows up to a foot and a half. And uh, here's a shocker Maine had snow. And uh, many areas in Maine picking up from six to as much as a foot. So uh, this uh, actually, uh, for a late season uh, event that does not, um, where lake effect is usually not an uh, not an issue here because the lakes are frozen, uh, was uh, fairly substantial. You don't uh, get lake effect events that often in late February or early March because most of the time those lakes are frozen. Right, and did you see some of those homes that were coated in ice? Yes, that was that that in a in a in a sense. I mean, what do you do with that? I mean, with snow is one thing, but when your house is completely coated with a thick or encased in ice, <laughs> yeah, that's, that was something. That was something, and uh, the uh, melting is uh, going to be a little slow. But they're going to get they're going to they're going to see their temperatures move up. Uh, uh, tomorrow and into Tuesday. So, but right now it's it's fairly cold up there. I'm just gonna let me just widen this, <clears throat> add a couple of uh, layers here, with regards to uh, the temperatures. Hang on one second. I'm a little. Uh, I don't know how many of you had a chance. Uh, I I don't you know I I I have. Oh, I've always been a big fan of the Flintstones. I had to while half an hour ago. They had the episode where Samantha and Darren move in across the street. Um, and the same interesting joke, when you watch the show Bewitched, there's always that uh, uh, the introduction where you see Samantha and Darren as cartoon characters. And whoever did the animation for this episode of the Flintstones simply took those uh, animations and just built them right into an episode of the Flintstones, Samantha uh, helping uh, Wilma and Betty as uh, the Fred and Barney go out on a camping trip, and uh, the sixth, the sixth and final season of the Flintstones, I think we made made mention of this, uh, was the one where they had celebrities yes. uh, visit the Flintstones. They had, <clears throat> we had the Stony Curtis, Stony Curtis, Stone. right, and Margrock, and Margrock, and again Samantha. So uh, very interesting. And by the way, and here's something for all of you to look at: a little Flintstone trivia. All through the first five seasons of the Flintstones, Barney, there was a subtle change about Barney between the first five seasons and the sixth season. Do you have any idea what, what it might have been? The voice. Didn't they change his voice? Not the well, the voice, the voice, 
The voice was different, actually, of in the first year of the Flintstones, Mel Blanc had a near-fatal uh, car accident. And in fact, for a few episodes, Dawes Butler, who was a Hanna-Barbera voice uh, characterization uh, talent, did the voice of Barney. And Barney's voice was different than what, you know, no, it didn't sound like, hello, Fred, hello. No. It was a different type of Barney. It sounded more like <laughs> Art Barney doing Norton. Yes. Right, exactly. <laughs> but a subtle change in Barney was that in the first five seasons, Barney's eyes were like Orphan Annie's eyes. They were circles. Right. They were not fixed in. In the sixth season, and this showed up especially well in this episode of the Flintstones, in the sixth season, Barney's eyes were completely uh, shaded in. Why? Uh, like, I wonder why. Two oval dots of India ink, so to speak. I don't know. I don't, somebody may have just said, hey, we ought to make Barney a little different. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you watch, if Barney's eyes are like circles and not filled in, that's one of the uh, first five seasons of the Flintstones. But the sixth season, Barney's eyes are... Uh, or, or for, for all of you trivia experts out there, I don't know if this Scott Briller will probably take note of this and put it in his analogy of uh, of uh, Jeopardy questions, but uh, <laughs> uh, or his catalog of Jeopardy questions. But anyway, we, uh, we, we, I need to talk about stuff like this because the the winter has just been so late. <laughs> no, it's like well, there's there it's so it, it, March coming in pretty much like a lamb. Uh, very quiet. There's no real major storms around. Uh, as, as I said earlier, it's cold. Uh, you know, it's it's cold. It's in the it's in the 30s uh, at the moment, as of 11 o'clock Eastern time. And and where we had all the deep snow and snow cover land, uh, it's uh, a little bit colder. It's in the upper 20s, even some low 20s in a couple of spots. That's got to be topography related. Uh, there's uh, uh, Griffiths Air Force Base right now is 23, so they're the standout cold spot. Everybody else is kind of pushing upper 20s to around 30. So that snow is going to melt, and it might wind up melting a little faster than you think. Um, it's not all going to melt away. And uh, the chilly temperatures uh, going down into Maryland and Virginia at the things uh, uh, at uh, again at 11 o'clock, generally in the 40s. Uh, you have to head down into South Carolina and into Georgia, where you start to get into uh, temperatures in the 50s with dew points in the 20s. And uh, just to give a check to Florida, then you start to get into Florida and you're you know, mostly in the middle and upper 60s showing up. Yeah, one or two spots uh, starting to pop up with a 70 degree reading. So that kind of takes care of the uh, uh, the current weather in the eastern United States anyway. And Joe, you look at the the uh, the national weather map uh, for watches and warnings. You've got some uh, wind advisories and high wind uh, issues up in North Dakota. Uh, some winter storm warnings in in southeast Mont uh, Wyoming and winter weather advisories surrounding that. And uh, some you know some winter weather advisories in uh, Southern California up the uh, uh, the uh, Sierra Nevadas where you're seeing probably if I pull up the individual forecast, we'll probably see winter weather advisories up for 24 inches or more of snow. <laughs> it's, it's just how they do it out there. It's just a snooze fest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't just, and you know, incidentally, Joe, uh, here at Rancho Rayo, uh, I have a, a very unusual thermometer. I can always tell when the temperature at my house gets to 18 degrees or lower. And the interesting way I do that is, is that when it gets that cold, my deck, my wooden deck, which is on the north facing side of my house, thumps. And when it gets very cold, I guess it has something to do with the fact that maybe uh, the, uh, the moisture inside of the, of the, of the uh, wood uh, expands or suddenly expands or whatever. But I could be, you know, we, my, my wife and I, we could be like, it's 1.30 in the morning and all of a sudden we hear outside, boof! <laughs> oh yeah, and we'll and she'll wake up and she say it must be at least eighteen out there. Yeah, <laughs> heard that last night. So, uh, by the way, south of Anchorage, in Alaska, on the uh, the Kenai Peninsula, Peninsula, there is a blizzard warning in effect south of Clam Gulch. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just so you know, I mean, I, I, I we don't, I. I don't pull this up often enough when I see in the in the lower uh, right hand, lower left hand corner that there's weather going on, and I just happen to notice that there's this big, this blizzard warning up. And I always like to pull up the blizzard warnings, if only to read what they're forecasting for snow, and it really isn't very much. So they're forecasting, for example, in the cities of Kenai, 
Soldatna, Homer, I can pronounce that correctly, and Cooper Landing. Blizzard conditions, visibility one quarter of a mile or less, south to southwest winds gust 20, gusting 25 to 40 miles per hour, total snow accumulations one to four inches. Well, you know, if, if, if that blizzard, if, if the conditions are such that the visibility is down to less than a quarter of a mile or near zero. That's all that matters. Matter. I it mean, does, it really doesn't matter how much snow actually physically accumulates. Correct. Uh, it's, just, it's just a matter of uh, meeting the criteria in terms of wind and temperature and visibility. And uh, that apparently, you said Clam Gulch? Clam Gulch. That sounds like a place in... in uh, where, where uh, the Beverly Hillbillies may have come from. Right, right? and not to be confused with Elvira Gulch. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you own half the county doesn't mean you get to run the rest of us. For 23 <laughs> years, I've been dying to tell you what, I, what I've thought of you. I know. And I know. Well, Christian woman, I can't now. say it. <laughs> <laughs> As I've gotten older, I've gotten more, you know, you get to... You start. You understand more and more of the readings of those lines. I wonder what word she was going to call her. <laughs> I have a. I have a couple in mind. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, satellite loop today. Quiet in the east. Uh, you. Uh, I, if you look carefully, folks, uh, Joe. If you look look on the loop, you can see the lake effect snow. Uh, it, it's it stands out so well along. Uh, uh, the northern areas of Ohio along the shores of Lake Erie into northwestern Pennsylvania. And then you can see where, where you think it looks like clouds, but it's not moving. That's your snow cover. And then you also can see there's a band of snow that runs down through Pennsylvania into northwestern Virginia and into the mountains of, of um, West Virginia and probably even getting down almost into um, you know west a very thin band west western Virginia and into westernmost North Carolina. That is that's actual the snow cover actually showing up uh, on on the satellite. So uh, lake effect uh, you know did its job. Plus this 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 uh, strong upper trough that was supporting all of this, extending that narrow band of snow southward down into the Appalachians. It's a it's a nice yeah. drive down I eighty one. Yes, it is. It is lovely, isn't it? Well, you know, it, I would suppose that the uh, the uh, snow, uh, the people who are in charge of clearing the snow uh, have done their best on uh, Interstate 81. In fact, uh, hopefully, the uh, as of this morning, it's free and clear and you can drive, even though on either side of the road, there's probably a ton of snow. But why don't we, for all of the, all of the folks who had to clear all that snow in upstate New York, why don't we give them a standing ovation? <laughs> oh, good God. All right. Um, radar, <laughs> radar's quiet uh, at the moment, uh, pretty much everywhere east of the Rockies. Uh, in, in Wyoming, we're seeing some snow there on uh, northern Utah and back into parts of Southern California. But again, there's just an absolute absence of, um, uh, of uh, activity going on. Now, uh, let's move on to uh, where we're going this week. And right off the bat, with regards to anything that, that may be down in the long range at the end of the week, uh, WPC, the Weather Prediction Center, if we want to use them for, you know, for support and for clues, uh, they're not overly bullish uh, here with regards to um, uh, precip. I mean, they're only forecasting anywhere between a tenth and a quarter or a quarter to a half. Uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the urban corridor from Washington to Boston, so right there, that kind of tells you that there's that that they're not really overly enthused by all of this. Uh, there's big rains that are going to occur from North Carolina and South Carolina back westward into Louisiana. Some three to as much as five inches of rain forecast to fall in the next seven days, and then that band extends east west across Texas. But when you look at this, Joe, you see that there's a frontal boundary that's going to set up across the Gulf states and where all the max precip is from there and out into the Atlantic. They're looking at this and they're saying this thing is going east north. Whatever forms down there is going east northeast and not turning up the coast. Right. Right. And in fact, uh, if I'm looking, I'm looking right now at the uh, four to seven day winter outlook from the National Weather Service. And for those people who have been talking and this is what I meant before about the rumblings for the end of this week about the possibility of some snow. 
right now the guys at the weather and gals at the weather prediction center are not too hardy on uh, suggesting any kind of significant or so even substantial snowfall especially along the i-95 corridor in fact the i-95 corridor right on through friday saturday and into sunday of next weekend uh is completely void of any snow probability all of the uh and it's a re relatively small probability, 10 to 30% probabilities are once again where they have been all winter to the north and to the west of the tri-state metropolitan area. Right. I, have, I have the map up for you. I've got Friday's probability of at least two, and it's confined to northern Pennsylvania and then uh, west of the Catskills going up uh, all to the Adirondacks. And then you got a gap, and then there's some more in, in uh, Vermont, western, uh, southern Vermont, western Mass., uh, western, uh, New, uh, southwestern New Hampshire, and then a little arm that extends up into Maine, and that's for Friday into uh, that's for Thursday into Friday, and then for Friday into Saturday, uh, it's um, it's it's pretty much you know north e northeasternmost Pennsylvania, well north of 84, uh, going on up. Let me put the boundaries on here for you, the state boundaries. You know, this same place, maybe the southern edge is a little bit further south. Uh, but it's it's north of uh, it, it's ba it's all north of Route 84, way north of Route 84. Right. This in fact, despite the fact that this morning uh, the uh, the zero Z run of the European, and it may very well do say this again with the 12 Z run, which is due out a couple of hours. Uh, they had a broad area of moisture. Uh, I I had the ability. I can I can actually see the where the moisture is on the European on the prog that I look at. And it's it's suggesting maybe you know a two to three or two to four inch snowfall for Friday into Friday night. But again, we've been seeing this all winter long, Joe. Where five and six days out, the European is suggesting something significant. And by the time we get to the actual event, uh, it turns out that it's anything but significant. So I wouldn't get too thrilled or too excited uh, about that prospect of significant snow, sticking snow. But uh, things could change, and maybe. Uh, Finally, the European will hit on one. I can tell you that looking at the latest GFS, that the GFS is taking this uh, potential coastal uh, disturbance and taking it out to our south and east and not giving us much of anything. So uh, right. we'll see. Well, we'll see. well I, I just pulled up the European from last night. And what, what's happening, you know, there, it, it's got the beginnings of a low in southern Louisiana. And actually on today's dam, it shows up as well. Uh, we'll, we, we'll show that in a, sec, in a moment, but uh, it basically tracks a low uh, east, northeast, or northeast off the North Carolina coast, and it kind of brings it up uh, off. It's offshore. There's the low uh, uh, on uh, Friday, uh, Thursday evening on the European, and you'll notice too, by the way, you've got this northern stream system here, okay? Because there really isn't a whole lot of cold air that's going to be around uh, this week. Obviously, there's going to be none. Uh, until you get uh, that northern part of the jet stream to get involved. And, and what the European does is it gets that northern uh, part of the jet stream involved way too late so that the low goes pretty far out offshore. And on um, some of the snow, the, the um, at least from the standpoint of what the European saw as snowfall on some of the other sites, it, really, it, 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 it brought some hefty snows to eastern New England. And uh, brought the back edge of snow just about to, um, to to my house in Central Long Island, but uh, that 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 is about it uh, from from the standpoint of uh, of snow. And when I bring up, I'm going to bring up the upper air here because uh, what I, I think what the models are struggling is the with with, with is the fact that you've got two uh, as as we've seen all all. Um, a number of times this winter, you've got that northern part of the jet stream doing its thing, and uh, here it is. So I'm just just going to kind of draw in a few short waves troughs in the northern part of the jet, and then you've got this energy in the southern part, you know, and that's moving eastward. And it, it, Joe, it, it, it's always about timing, and you know, your northern stream is coming down here. Uh, on Thursday night, your southern stream energy is running way ahead of it, so that by the time they phase, the trough, if the European, which was the most bullish of all the models last night, really, the Canadian was even more bullish, but I think the Canadian's timing was was really um, wishful thinking for snow lovers, because it, it, it lined the trough up uh, much further to the west than even the European had 
But, you know, the Europeans, uh, the way the troughs kind of line up on the European, uh, it would it would suggest a near miss. Uh, here's the um, uh, the new Canadians coming out. Let me just go to last night's Canadian model. And you'll see that the Canadian model really phases it in a lot sooner. It's got this northern stream system uh, diving in and strengthening. Uh, and cutting off and cutting off off the New Jersey coast. It had this really dynamic looking system. I, I, I don't know, Joe. I think that's all. I, I think that's pretty far fetched in a winter where we haven't seen, you know, even even a minimal uh, weather system uh, uh, produce some, some snow. How are you going to all of a sudden get this thing to look uh, dynamic is beyond me. Well, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the uh, European ensemble, not the, the zero Z. I, I actually, again, have access to uh, the intermediate uh, runs of the European, and I'm looking at the 6Z ensemble, and from my description here, what I can tell you is, is that they have, between the northern and southern stream, they have a definite teleconnection taking place by 12Z on Friday, okay. and then that's just really, really revs up during the latter part of next Friday. Now, what that tells me is, is that it is possible that if they do get that teleconnection, that maybe uh, we might actually see uh, some uh, significant uh, precipitation breakout during the day on Friday, but we might only be on the back edge here in the tri-state area that it really looks like it's going to be winding up. And for the folks from Cape Cod to down east Maine and up into uh, the Maritimes of Canada, which have really been getting battered like a pinata from snowstorms this winter season in contrast to what we have seen, this could be a, a very uh, significant uh, event for the end of the week into the weekend. So something I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, push it away completely. You're not going to toss it. Yeah. Yeah. But and, and it'll be interesting because like I said, time and time again, we have seen the Europeans say big snowstorm in five or six days or a big major system coming around. And it always like a balloon. It shrivels up as we get closer to the event. This may be yet another case of that. Or maybe in a winter where we've seen this countless numbers of times, maybe this might be the one. But again, you're going to have to uh, Prove it to I, me. I'm from, I'm, I'm from Missouri. You have to show me. Show me. <laughs> well, I'm the new GFS, Joe, does does bring this northern stream shortwave down. It sort of weakens the southern one, but it really goes um, it goes a bit berserk with the northern stream shortwave, uh, wrapping it up with an upper low in northern Michigan that dives to off the New Jersey coast by later Friday night. And I, actually, looking at the new surface map, it, it's trying to bring that coastal low. I mean, still way out. Uh, brings, but the GFS likes to suppress, so you you could correct it uh, a, a bit westward for this. I mean, it does take the low way out at like 35 and about 64 or 5. Right. But you can sort of see how that, you know, the northern stream does try to come down and it tries to do something with it. Um, yeah, and I, you know, the icon has gotten a little more uh, suppressed on this run uh, with, with this whole thing. Suddenly, uh, now, it can barely find a low. Uh, in that southern stream, uh, which it was also as bullish, as, even more bullish than the European in terms of precip, it's got a flat wave that goes out on Thursday now off the Virginia North Carolina coast, and then it really does nothing uh, with the energy coming down from the north. So the icon has suddenly gone from being on board with some of what the other models were doing to now not being on board at all. So, uh, I, I, you know what? Given that where we are in the calendar, and given the fact that um, the w you know the way the whole month of February turned out in particular, uh, it, it's really going to be a tough sell for me to kind of buy that. That all of a sudden we're going to wind up um, uh, with, with with a uh, with a surprise. Hey, if if it happens, it happens. But um, and I won't be able to see it because I'm heading down south for a for 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 a week. Uh, but. Uh, oh, well, then, 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 it, then, then it's definitely, definitely going to happen. Oh, yeah. Definitely we'll get it now because uh, you're not going to be here. Exactly. Taking a look uh, at the weather for the week ahead, folks. I mean, we've got, you know, we're going to see our temperatures start to warm up tomorrow into Tuesday. Uh, probably going to get into maybe a couple of passing showers Monday night. Uh, there, there's a, a couple of systems moving along here, uh, which uh, will maybe bring another couple of showers to deal with. Uh, Tuesday, late Tuesday, Tuesday night into early Wednesday. Doesn't look like a big deal, but now you see that southern boundary setting up uh, in the Gulf states here uh, for uh, Wednesday. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Hang on. Um, uh, 
a little bit. My finger moved a little bit too fast. Let's get the radar up here. And you know what, Joe, while you're doing that, I, I just want to tell you that looking at the upper air on the GFS kind of reminds me. And I don't want anybody out there now to say, hey, Joe Rayo said this is going to be a repeat of 1978. But it kind of reminds me of the, night, of the February 1978 uh, upper air pattern where we had this weak little piddling coastal system uh, about 100 miles to the east of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, slowly moving away from the coastline. And we had this incredibly digging shortwave dropping down from central Canada through the Great Lakes, and it just simply grabbed hold of that little piddling system offshore and said, wait a minute, where are you going? And like injected it with steroids, pulled it back toward the coast, and the damn thing exploded. Right, but you don't have, a, you have no blocking, you have no, right. if you remember, Joe, there was a 1055 high sitting exactly. all across Canada. Exactly. I mean, but, I mean, like what, what I know when you look at the digging, you yeah, I understand what you're what you're saying. But we're uh, seeing by the end of the week, it almost looks like that digger is going to try is is trying to teleconnect and grab that thing and pull it back to the north and west. But you know, it's you're you're absolutely correct. We had lots of blocking in that in that pattern, and that's why that 1978 storm kind of idled in neutral gear south of uh, Montauk Point for about 24 hours, and why places like uh, in Rhode Island and portions of Massachusetts got 20 to 50 inches of snow. Not going to happen this time around. By the I way... I'd just be happy just to get two to five inches of snow and not 20 to 50. But, right. Uh, but uh, by the way, you know, you look at the... I'm just looking at the upper air. So after this whole scenario plays out this week, um, looks like we get into a bit of a ridge position here to a, to a certain extent uh, going uh, into through next weekend and into the following week. It's kind of like a you know, straight west to east flow doesn't look to me like there's a whole lot of cold air around with this. If that's the case, we might see some uh, warmer temperatures uh, going into uh, maybe next week for, a, a, you know, at least a couple of days. Did the Pacific look like it's trying? No, it's not. It uh, For a second, uh, it seemed to me like it was trying to develop some kind of a fire hose, but no sooner did that pop into my mind, but Boom! Immediately, a trough came on down from Alaska. You do have, a, yeah, you have a deep, you have a deep, and you also have a deep cut off off the uh, off of California that's just sitting out there. Right. By the way, uh, speaking of teleconnections, uh, they are uh, not, you know, not very good, and that's been the story all winter long. Somebody after this whole winter is done is going to go back, look back, look back, and find out exactly what went wrong. With all of this, I mean, I, I really think it's just the fact that the polar vortex locked itself away the way it did. The uh, There's no new teleconnections out yet based on last night's run. This, these are the ones from yesterday. And we go to a super negative PNA, Pacific North America Index. The NAO actually is weakly positive and kind of gets down to the neutral line as you get toward the middle of the month. And the EPO is, you know, it's eh. A weekly positive goes strongly positive. You really want this index to be negative if you're a winter weather lover. It does go slightly negative for a few days around the 7th and 8th, and then it goes back slightly positive after that. So net-net, uh, when you look at all the teleconnections, uh, they're not uh, they're not too promising uh, for some uh, late-season stuff. Adam Lowe uh, writes on the chat board. Uh, he's talking to uh, Bobby. He says the MJO is going to be in Phase 4 by this Friday. That is one of the warmest phases for March. In March, phases three and five are snowy for us, and it's not going to go in those phases anytime soon. Naturally, because it's going to go. It's you know, it, I I I really didn't uh, mention the um, the MJO, the Mad Julian Oscillation, over the last week or to ten days because there was um, there was a stretch back. Uh, back a week or so, so ago, or maybe a little bit longer. Oh, it looks like it's going into phase phases eight, phase eight and phase one. And uh, that's going to mean for, uh, you know, very cold uh, conditions uh, going into uh, the first part of March. Well, we got, you know, it is cold. I mean, and it is, uh, you know, yesterday, I think we were probably about six or more degrees below average in most places. So, okay, we can call that cold. Uh, but yeah, the MJO has been totally non-cooperative um, uh, for the whole winter. So uh, before I would come back full screen, you know, I, I put this link up uh, in the chat for those of you who are interested. Uh, Scott Briller, uh, the chairman, put this uh, sent this to me on Twitter uh, uh, from a website called snowbrains.com, and they have the top snowfall uh, uh, events in history. 
just in case you were wondering. And, uh, you know, just to, uh, just to make you drool, Mount Rain Rain Rainier in, in the National Park in Washington gets 1,000, got 1,224.5 inches uh, in one year. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. that's 102 feet or something. Uh, oh. Mount Baker's ski area in Washington State, 1,140. Tompkin, Thompson Pass in Alaska, 974 inches. And they got some pictures of what that looks like. Um, Squaw Valley, 728. Uh, that was in, uh, actually, that was in 2016-2017 uh, 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 that that occurred. That's what, that's the year, that, 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 that's the year following the El Nino. And of course, California had that, that massive five-year drought that got all, got basically taken out and then some in, uh, in one or two seasons. 78 inches in 24 hours in Thompson Pass, Alaska. Um, Silver Lake, Colorado, also uh, 76 in 24 hours. And, and on and on it goes. But one of the things that's common through all of this thread, Joe, is that they're all in the West. Uh, none of these places are in the East. I will say, however, that I don't know, I forgot. So, uh, I, one of the regulars posted it to me. And I'm sorry, I, I can't recall off the top of my head, but one of these uh, lake effect snow towns in upstate New York got a foot of snow in one hour. Oh, my goodness. In one hour. Okay, oh. now I've seen five in one hour. Oh, yeah. uh, that, that I've seen and, and, and have experienced. So I'm thinking uh, twice as much of that falling, because it was five in one hour is a basic whiteout condition. So I'm, guess, I'm guessing that... Um, I, I'm guessing that a foot in an hour, when you're looking at it out the window, looks just like just like like a solid, like some like a painted white wall, yeah. you know. I mean, well, that's that's crazy. I remember the uh, February 1978 storm, Pomona, New Jersey, which is just inland of Atlantic City, and that's actually where the airport is. When you see a, a weather observation from Atlantic City, uh, it's not Atlantic City on the boardwalk; it's from Pomona which again is about, I think, 10 miles inland from, uh, from the coast. Uh, but they had four inches in one hour uh, at that uh, storm in 78. And I remember the 83 megalopolitan storm, which dumped one to two feet of snow on average from Washington to Boston. And Allentown, Pennsylvania, in one hour during that storm had five inches in one hour. That's about as high up as I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned the 12 inches in one hour uh it, it, that 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 is ridiculous a foot of snow in one hour that's that's crazy uh by the way whoever hit super chat i can't see who it was but whoever hit super chat thank you very much i don't know if you could see it on your end it is it is richie comenzo oh very good and and that's a new name uh that i uh, welcome to the uh welcome to our our show and welcome to uh my youtube channel thanks for being and here he, appreciate he it actually says he actually ties in a comment he said Treat yourself to a nice lunch, Joe. You deserve it. Uh, thank you very much. for. Uh, it's always uh, nice to see new folks on board. And, uh, again, thank you uh, for, for um, hitting Super Chat. Uh, Vito Spano, there's nothing new here. So, uh, you know, Joe, you were mentioning uh, the fact that uh, you're going to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll hold on to um, the possibility that late in the month uh, maybe something <coughs> could happen. But... We better start to see, you know, we're at March 1st, so we better start seeing some hints of a change in the weather pattern really soon, because if we don't, uh, we, we, that may not happen. It may not. It may not. And yeah, you're absolutely right. If we don't see it by the latest, the latest St. Paddy's Day, uh, if we don't see any kind of signal or change that we may have uh, uh, a, a complete, you know, flip-flop of this current pattern, I think that's it. We could throw the towel in on... Uh, on the winter of 20, uh, 2019, 2020. It, is, uh, it has not been. And again, this is just for the I-95 corridor. You folks who live north of 90 uh, or up near Interstate 81 in the Syracuse area and well up into uh, New England, you've had your fair share of snow this winter season. But for us down here, it has been a snow ground. By the way, Joe, Philadelphia saw a trace of snow yesterday. Oh, glory, uh, hallelujah. And that, that put an end to their string. Had they not had that trace of flakes in the air, they would have gone through February uh, with no snow whatsoever. But uh, they did see a trace, so give them credit for that on, on leap day of all days. Well, they're going to have one of those, um, sit, barring a surprise, they're going to have one of those situations where um, uh, next year, where it, 
the last time that they had an inch is going to go back to last winter. And so, you know, they're, they're going to have a lot of days where they're going to say it's been so many hundreds of days since the right. last time we had an inch of snow. Their number is going to be pretty big, along with a few other places, by the way, uh, in that in that general region. Right. It's just crazy. We're back up full screen now. Uh, I, I don't know if you could see uh, anything on the chat as far as any questions, because uh, we're always uh, wanting to, uh, you know, we welcome any questions or comments, folks. And I know the chat board is pretty busy today. Listen, James James uh, is, is uh, answering Frank uh, Rick, Riccio here. Uh, James says Newfoundland is not part of the Maritimes of Canada. And that's surprising to me. I would have thought that they are part of the Canadian Maritime Provinces. They are, I'm not talking about Labrador. Labrador is obviously on the mainland, so to speak, and part of Newfoundland is too. But Newfoundland Island, I thought that was considered to be part of the Maritime Provinces. Uh, and uh, I, I, yeah, I thought, I thought they were. Um, Adam Lowe says the zonal westerlies are yet at another daily record today and are going to be at a daily record for the next week. Until that NAO comes crashing down, which it will do, uh, at least uh, come down off its highs now. Uh, yeah, there's no traffic in the Atlantic. And that's another thing with regards to this weather system off the southeast coast. You know, the, you know we, we've been dealing with this Atlantic fire hose. As much as we talk about the Pacific fire hose, we've been talking about the Atlantic fire hose that runs from uh, the east coast all the way straight to Europe. And there's nothing out there. to You, you need storms out there to kind of create a situation where something coming off the East Coast can't go east because there's something ahead of it that's blocking it. So it tries to find the path, path of least resistance, and it starts to climb northward. But you don't have that. So uh, that's another dead set against as far as uh, anything happening at the end of the week. Nothing has changed uh, fundam fundamentally. Nothing, in my view, has changed in the overall scheme of things to, uh, to, 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 you're going to have to prove it to me. And I'm, uh, by the way, I'm looking at the Canadian on its run, which, which has been guilty of doing this. So the Canadian has a bit more of a phased look. So it brings this coastal low from off the North Carolina coast, almost to 40 and 70, Joe, it's got a 969 low at 39 and a half and 69 and a half, right, right, near, the right near the benchmark. But it's also showing rain from northern New Jersey and Long Island southward, and snow when you go north and west of there. I mean, it's got that kind of typical March look to things where the atmosphere, you know, you, you, you got, you, you're, you're dealing with a, a marginal amount of cold air. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that suddenly a storm is going to develop, get wrapped up, and, and pull its way northward. From what I'm sorry, I see. sorry to laugh while you're, while you're talking about the Canadian uh, assessment here, but I just saw on the chat board, uh, Scott Briller has uh, kicked in $5 and says, Briller Flintstone Jeopardy coming soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right, though, with the weather the way it's been. Uh, we're filling, you know, kind of filling our, our, our minds with all this, um, uh, all this uh, TV trivia. So now, I, you're going to be away. You're leaving <clears throat> tomorrow. Yes. Are we going to do anything? Are you going to be doing uh, from the Southland? Yeah. No, no. I like which I've done before. So uh, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, I, it's just that tomorrow is a travel day. Right. And I, I, I mean, I guess there's an outside chance because uh, um, we're I'm, I'm driving down. So right. uh, and I'm also not leaving until uh, in, after the morning rush hour is done. So. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm thinking that if I get into a hotel room, which is, I'm going to have to do, get to sleep a little bit. Uh, I'm probably not going to get into a hotel room until nine or 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So, uh, look, if, if, if there was a threat for a major storm, uh, uh it, it, that was imminent, I would, I would then run into the hotel room, set it up and, and, and do it. But, um, so let's, let's wait till Tuesday. Okay. Let's see what happens on Tuesday. And we'll play it by ear. Well, I'm just trying to play it by ear every day uh, th th this week. Uh, so uh, that because that'll help me out. And of course, you have your short fuse update on your uh, on your YouTube channel, Joe Rayo Weather. So while uh, you know, if if we're not able to do our live streams together at night, you make sure you're uh, subscribed to Joe Rayo's uh, YouTube channel so you can get uh, your live streams. Of course, Patreon members uh, that are on my Patreon uh, platform. 
nothing changes for you guys. Everything will be uh, pretty much the same going forward. Uh, I'm, I, I, can, I can easily post from the car because I'm not driving. That was yes. Somebody else is driving. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's that's nice. That yeah. You have somebody somebody with you. Yeah, um, no, I'm going down with a friend of mine to. Uh, I'm going to stop and see my grandkids, and then then uh, then we're going to take a quick trip down to Florida because he's got a place there he wants to check up on, and then and then we'll head back. So this is kind of like a little, you know, workation. We'll call it. Well, I saw. I think it was on Friday. On uh, one of the local news channels, they were showing clips of the uh, uh, Grapefruit League, uh, League or exhibition game with the New York Mets. And it was, and they showed everybody was bundled up. They were really cold, Joe. The temperature was only around 62 degrees down there. And they were all bundled as if it was like in the 30s. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm hoping, for so I'm hoping for something a little different. Bill, no, I'm not taking the Toyota. Um <clears throat> My uh, Toyota Corolla is is at two hundred ninety nine thousand miles. Wow! So, <clears throat> but I'm not. I I've done two trips with it to uh, to to Atlanta in the last year. Uh, I I am not going to risk a third. When I was coming back from the second trip, I was I, I got to where, you know, I started hearing things in the car, and I thought, you know what, just get me home, <laughs> okay, and I'll deal with it when I get home, which I did. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm not taking the Toyota. I'm going to try to push it up to 100, up to 300,000, and then I'm going to get myself a new vehicle. Uh, uh, James uh, says the maritime region is pre-1949 before Newfoundland became part of Canada, which is Nova Scotia. Uh, P E L P E I. Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island. Okay, and and New Brunswick. After Newfoundland joined it, it became uh, Atlantic Canada. Okay, we All stand right. corrected. So, look, have a great Sunday. Um, and everybody at home watching, thanks for being here. Have a great Sunday. And uh, we will uh, probably won't see you tomorrow, but we may see you on Tuesday. And maybe and, on Tuesday, maybe on Tuesday, Joe, with you all the way down there, uh, the forces of Snowdom will say, well, he's down there now. So now let's. Yeah, teleconnect and and have that big storm. On oh you. yeah, no, 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 because that they're gonna they're gonna make me suffer. Uh, yes, because it would not be the first time that something like that happened. All right, okay. have a great day. We'll uh, we'll see you guys uh, again probably on Tuesday. Good night, everybody. Uh, good, have a good afternoon. Night, night yes.